Before the episode starts, I just want to give a quick shout out to myself because I've got another single coming out on the 3rd of July. This time I'm doing a cover of Michael Jackson's Human Nature and at the end of the episode I'm going to play the full song. Enjoy! Gemma! (laughs) (laughs) Did you hear that? (laughs) It just went Gemma! Gemma! don't know if you can hear that or not but every time i talk the builder outside decides to hammer his hammer you might have it might have picked that up i don't know but i mean do they not know i'm bloody making a podcast here anyway this week's episode is something completely different because you know what i like to mix it up so i catch up with my friend kelly Me and Kelly have been friends for years and we chat all the time on the phone and I thought, you know what, as something different, I'm going to let you in on the little secret of our friendship. So we talk about Australia, travelling around and also Kelly is on a game show, not to give it too much away, but she is and I can't say the name of it because, I mean, all I want to do is say, but I can't. Instead, you get Gemma when I say... Get it! I'm claustrophobic! So, anyway, enjoy! We've just been at McDonald's. It was so good. Do you not feel dirty after it, though? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm sat here now thinking... I don't even know if I could legitimately eat dinner now, because I'm so full, but every chicken nugget was worth it. Oh my god! Did you give it to give it to your brother? Yeah, he opened up the little box, so we'd obviously saved him some mozzarella dippers and a couple of chicken nuggets. And chicken he was only nugs. expecting he was only expecting mozzarella dippers, so he opened the box and he was like, oh, "Thank you," because he saw the couple of chicken nuggets we'd left him. Oh my god! And do you know what else as well? When I, when I went to start recording this, I um I had the window open. And yeah. literally, I was like, oh, I've had to shut the window because someone was going, Misty, Misty. And they were shouting at their dog, Misty. And she was like, Misty. 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 She's like, Misty, Misty. Isn't, isn't that a character from Pokemon? Like one of the evil Team Rockets? I don't know, but she was screaming it down the road. I was like, because uh-huh. this microphone's really sensitive. It picks up everything. So I could hear her just going, <laughs> Misty. I should have just kept it in. Oh my god! You should use it as a soundbite for later. Just do you know? Do you know what I say to that? <laughs> no. Do I need to introduce you? Do I, do I introduce you? Yeah, I suppose I should I do, shouldn't I? So I work with Kelly. Kelly is a famous rapper. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine if you, this is she's my, like this is my the MC on the game. <laughs> MC Kelly. M- MC Kelly rap. Wills. Yeah, she's here to rap. She's here to throw some shapes. And yeah, we oh work God. together. So we're... Um, oh, I'll just drop my phone. Uh, yeah, so we're managers in the same place and we've known each other for like forever and ever. And uh, yeah, It Kelly, feels like it, doesn't it? It does. How long is it actually since we've... How long have we known each other? It's happened to me only, would you believe, like five and a half years. Oh, wow. So it's just before I got married then? Yeah. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because yeah, cause you've only just been been technically with us five years on and off. Yeah, on January, yeah, in January. Sorry. Freaking hell, five years, it feels like I've known you a lot I just longer. Feel, I was going to say, it does feel like a lot longer. Yeah. And like, we have loads of the same interests, especially in like trashy TV. 
Well, I just think really that I am, I'm the same as you, I, but I'm just a gay man trapped inside a woman's body. So that's like why we get along so well. Either that or I'm just a straight woman trapped in a gay man's body. <laughs> Do you know, either, either, you know, tomato, 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 is that the same? <laughs> tomato, tomato. Do you not find, right, I'll tell you this now, you'll find this, right, this is what mm -hmm. I find. When I've recorded the podcast, right, we just talk normally <laughs> on the phone, normally, but when you talk on the podcast, you do actually start mixing up your words. So a couple of weeks ago, when I had one with, like, Dean and Amanda, and I was talking to them, there's one thing she said, she's like, um, she said something like, oh, it's nice to talk to you, and I was like, yes, it's nice to talk. It's lovely to talk. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I would never say that in normal life. But you do find yourself saying these, like, random words and random oh, shit. Oh, God. You're like, yeah. I'm dreading tomato. listening to it. I'm what, dreading listening to back? it back. Yeah. Oh, no. Hearing your voice back. I'll put you through a compressor. <laughs> I might even deepen your voice. <laughs> when you do, you make your voice really deep, like a man. You should... You should auto tune it like those rappers where they're like, <laughs> like that. Kelly the rapper, but you sound like T Pain. <laughs> Brilliant, K Pain. So, yeah, so we even just before we started doing this podcast, we went to McDonald's to talk about the podcast and we didn't do that. We sat there talking about Housewives of Beverly Hills and Chicken oh, Nuggets. Oh, my God. Yeah, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Chicken Nuggets. Probably two things, you know, like that you couldn't ever say in the same sentence normally because I don't think any of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills have probably ever sniffed a chicken nugget. No. They probably look no. a bit like a chicken nugget without them dressing up. <laughs> they've never sniffed chicken when they've, missed the when they've missed the Botox session, they look a bit like a McDonald's chicken nugget. Well, can I say McDonald's? Yeah, or... yeah you can say McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. Okay. McDonald's, okay. KFC, Woolworths. I mean, Woolworths don't other, exist anymore. Other today. restaurants are available. <laughs> other <laughs> restaurants are available. But yeah, McDonald's was so good. Oh, it was. And it wasn't actually that busy. So any of you listeners, listeners out there, if you've not had a McDonald's, get yourself there today. I mean, this is the second time on a podcast I'm admitting I'm having McDonald's. Oh, my God. So, Kelly, yeah. you travelled all around Australia for years and years and years and like <laughs> a year in the UK. Um, <laughs> it was only two years. And, but... <laughs> two years, yeah, exactly. And you had chicken Big Mac. Yeah, so they had this like, it was like a special burger, you know how we get them over here, and it's normally like Mexican burger and France burger and all that like rubbish. Yeah. They just had like a special chicken Big Mac, and Ugh. obviously I'd never tried Big Mac sauce because I don't eat Big Mac, so I didn't know what I was missing out on until I bought a chicken Big Mac, and oh... My actual God, I couldn't get over how... I, I remember once buying oh. a chicken Big Mac before a night out in Australia, yeah? And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't eat it. I was, too, I was too, like, I don't know, full or something. I didn't end up eating it. And I got back from this night out, and it was in the fridge, and I got it out, and it was just the oh, most... Mate. Oh, my God, the most satisfying thing ever was eating this chicken Big Mac cold out the fridge. We should, but, we should actually recreate it, because you can now <gasps> buy Big Mac sauce... Yeah, you can. You can buy pots of Big Mac sauce. So all you would have to do is order two uh, two ch McChicken sandwiches, just hold the mayo, so say no mayo, buy yourself yeah. a pot of Big Mac sauce and recreate it, and voila, you've got yourself a chicken Big Mac. And honestly, the, pi the, the sort of pickly sauce that is Big Mac works really well with the chicken like burgers. Oh my God, that's what so. we're going to do next time we go to McDonald's. <gasps> next time we have a McDonald's treat, we're going to do chicken Big Macs. Yeah. I'm sure it won't be far away. I'm sure it's only maybe two days <laughs> until we have yeah. another McDonald's. <laughs> so we normally love being at work and being busy and we're just like, now we're like, just slobs. living the life, just living the life like slobs. So we met yeah. up last week for mm -hmm. a picnic. That was nice. Yeah, socially we were... distanced picnic and a walk it was. It was good. <laughs> it rained and we got lost. Yeah, rain. We got rained. Got we got lost. You know, did thirteen kilometers when we were only thinking we'd do about five. Um, I had yeah, to no, pee. Oh my God, to <laughs> and wee. This <laughs> and this deer was watching me. <laughs> and I said that um, if anyone was going to come, I'd say a code word, but I wouldn't have if they'd have come. I'd have just let them soon in piss. I mean, pee. Yeah. I mean, wee. Yeah piss and then we kept going the wrong way and then when i got home right i had to look at my watch and my phone yeah. where we'd actually gone 
and yeah. we'd gone right up this path the wrong way then we came back then I was like no we want to go this way we went up another path we got about five <laughs> minutes up there and then you were like no this isn't the way and then we had to go back and uh yeah and then we saw the weird guys funny. with the camera Santa with the camera claws oh my god yes and we've had our birthdays in lockdown and we brought each other presents I oh, know. Can you I... believe both of us had a, a miserable lockdown birthday? I know. But actually, my birthday was the first time we saw each other, right in the middle of yeah. May. That was like eight, nine weeks in. Yeah, to be fair, gosh, it was such a hot day. I remember driving over, bringing you presents, and just standing <laughs> like in the street <laughs> while you stood in the doorway, people looking at us, <laughs> what the freak <laughs> I picked up my cat Precious, she jumped up and scratched me and ran off. <laughs> the cats weren't remember... happy to see a stranger, were they? No, Felix was sat on the stairs looking through, just kept peeking and peeking back, staring at you and moving I'm not, back. I'm, the thing is, I'm not even a stranger, but I'll feel like one because they haven't seen me in so long. <laughs> Do you know what? They've not seen anybody, so they're just used mm. to me. And I mean, like, John's gone back to work now, so they're just used to me being here all the time. It's really weird. I mean, I love when, I, when we eventually go back to work, they're going to have, like, proper separation anxiety. Well, I think oh. I am. So where did you go? Tell us. Tell the world where I you went. The... So I spent most of my time in lovely, sunny Brisbane in Queensland, which is where all my friends are and... It's like, oh, it's, it's amazing. I had a great time. I just temped while I was there, just did some temp work. Um, my is first... it where Neighbours is shot? <laughs> no, no. Na- neighbours, I think, is down yeah. in Melbourne. And then Home oh. Away is in Sydney, New South Wales. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've never even asked you about Neighbours, but yeah, go on. Yeah, well, I think, I think that's right. If not, don't quote me. Yeah. Um, but... Don't quote me. <laughs> don't quote me so yeah so I spent most of my time in Brisbane I worked there so like I had a really cool job at a um a really big helicopter firm that was just so cool that was when I used to speak to you every day yeah and that was such a good job like and it was really easy because all I was doing was just temping so I was just like doing admin work and stuff but it was just so I could save up to go traveling and things like that and then I did the dreaded f farm work Oh, yeah, you did farm work. Yes. Uh, I forgot about that. Oh, I know. I'm getting a bit gaggy. I bet, I bet your nails it. were rank. I bet e- your nails were rank. Everything. Everything was rank. Everything. Because you yeah. just constantly covered head to toe in muck, sweat and bugs. Oh, my God. And, do, like, over there, the bugs, like, kill you. So they, like, rob you and everything. Did I ever tell you the story <laughs> about the praying mantis? No. So there I am, like working away like a slave on the farm because it is like slave work in disguise. Honestly, they get away with it, but they treat you so poorly. And yeah, I was planting at this point, planting sweet potatoes. That's what that's what I was doing. And I was holding a bunch of sweet potato vines in one hand, so then I could grab with the other hand and plant each vine, and and you know do so so. So. I'm resting my ha- my arm on my leg because, you know, it's like back-breaking work. And the next minute, I yeah. feel this jab on my knee, and I'm like, ah, what was that? And I look down at my knee, and, you know, there is actually a red dot. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> that really hurt. So I had a look at the vines because I thought, I wonder if there was a spiky vine or something, you know, that's, that's jabbed yeah. me. And I opened up my hand, and there in my hand was a... Um, like a ginormous praying mantis that I was crushing to death by accident and it jabbed me in like a last ditch attempt to get free and I screamed I threw the bunch of vines to the floor because you know me I can't even be near a fly and and started like running away and everyone was like what is it thinking it was like a snake or something and I was like there's a praying mantis in my bunch of vines and they were just like oh and they, they they're not like toxic or anything are they they're just no, like no i did i did sort of freak out and think i was gonna have to have a shot or something but no my my uh farm hand boss was like no it's fine it's fine and then we went to look at it and i'd had to be fair i felt quite bad after to be because i had i'd squashed him he was bleeding 
Oh, is he dead? Yeah, I'd, I'd crushed him to death. He just like made a, a his like last breath was to stab me. To stab you? <laughs> oh my god, you're praying mantis killer. I'd freak yeah. out because I'd be like, oh my god, take me to hospital. I don't know what that well, is. Well, we don't have praying mantis. We don't have them over here. So for us, like for me anyway, I was like. It was huge, and I was what like, is "What? The... Yeah." I was like, "What the hell is that?" And obviously, he'd obviously been hiding in the vines, or you know, or something. So, he he didn't mean he didn't mean to be there, but yeah, I, I killed him. Felt terrible, but also I had a red dot on my leg for ages, which I thought would, my leg was oh, going to fall off. Oh my god! And did you see anything else? Because you said you didn't really see much, did you? <sighs> no, and 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 it's, a lot of people always say to me like, "Oh, I don't know how you've been to Australia. There's so many snakes and spiders and all those horrible things." Now. I spent most of my time in the cities where you don't see anything anyway. But when I was on my farm, I was up in Bundaberg, which is their famous. It's famous for rum, Bundaberg rum. I don't right. Know. I think it's pretty famous over here as well. But it's it's obviously big, like quite famous in America, America, Australia. Yeah. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Australia, America, Gemma, <laughs> Gemma, um, Darren. So. <laughs> <laughs> We did see stuff on the farm. So one time there was uh, this situation where we were weeding. So we were just pulling out things that weren't sweet potatoes, literally just walking through really thick vines. You know, it was a night you didn't know what you were stepping into. It was horrendous. I, 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 didn't, I didn't like it. I would freak. Yeah. And we had to be on snake alert, like as in because brown snakes, which are really venomous, were quite prevalent in the area. So... I remember we all had headphones in and, you know, we're all bent over, heads down, pulling these weeds out. And next minute, this this Irish girl, bless her, she comes sprinting down her track and she was screaming, snake, snake, snake. And we, were, we all started running like, oh, my God, you know, because we, were, <laughs> we didn't want to be anywhere near the snake either. Next minute, I see my the farm hand. He was called Gary, by the way. He was he was actually really cool in the end. He got a yeah. he got like a spade or something out of his truck, and he was like, "Where is it?" Like, and starts like bounding over to just go and whop this like <laughs> snake. And we get to this the the, the girl that had seen the second we were like, "Are you okay?" And she was like, "Yeah, it was a baby." And then Gary, the farm hand, was like, "Oh well, well, if the baby's there, the mum's going to be nearby, so we better like." move away from this area now because wherever there's a baby there's a protective mother somewhere there's like you know so we stopped yeah we, imme- pissed off yeah, we immediately stopped weeding there went to did another job on like a different part of the farm but yeah so i never the only snake i saw was dead already it had been ravaged by coyotes it just sounds like a film doesn't it oh my god it just sounds ridiculous um so i oh. saw i saw a dead brown snake and also we were on the we were on the farm once and our boss comes up and he's like, check this out. And just pulls from behind his back a, a massive bearded dragon. What? Yeah. Did you ever see the photo on my Instagram? I think I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I think I did. Do you remember I put the hashtag? Um, I put something like, oh, I've worked with bearded dragons before, but never like this. Hashtag. Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> That's an I love it. In, in yeah, joke. it's an in-joke. Um, but yeah, so... The, the, I've probably have to Gemma that. I've probably have to Gemma. Gemma. Oh yeah, hashtag Gemma. Um, but yeah, so no, it was it was interesting, but God, yeah, do, do they work you to the bone and get every single scent out of you that they can? You had to do that farming, didn't you, to get another visa to go back? Yeah, so I did my first year, and in that first year, the, the conditions have changed slightly now, but I had to do three months' farm work to contribute back to the society so that they would give me a second year working holiday visa. So I did that. Came, yeah. So I earned my visa, but I didn't, um, I didn't use it because I thought, right, I'll, save, I'll, I'll work a bit at home, spend some time with family and friends, it was only meant to be a couple of months, but it ended up being like eight or nine, um, and save up money to go back. So, so you came back, yeah, for yes. So I came back for about eight or nine months. It was I just worked for, um, I, I worked with a lady that I knew from our where we work, our place yeah. of work now, and um, so I knew her through there. Yeah, our and, business coach. Yeah, our business coach did some work just some sales and marketing with her and yeah then went back to australia and i attempt again when i got out there um which again was a really cool job at 
their version of the, the national lottery. So oh my god, you worked at the lottery. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. And in the call centre. So that was my first ever experience working in a call centre and I, I loved it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. Yeah, you said um, that. You said I, it was really strict, yeah. but it was good. I I I loved that competitiveness because, you know, we had weekly um meetings, I guess, at, you know, within the whole team. It was a call centre of, you know, well over sort of I would say fifty people in the room. You know, yeah. in the bigger sort of room. And we we were we were held to account for all the things, you know, we did right or d- didn't do right and, and I I enjoyed that and even though, you know, I just went in, did my job and went home and it you know, that that, that was it. it I enjoyed it. I really did. That, the, the you man. like that, though, that kind of thing. And I, I do. I'm the same. You like that kind of being yeah. pushed. And... Did you yeah. have any, um, any, I probably asked you this, but what was like, did you have anybody win anything really big? <gasps> yes. So they were the best calls, whether they won, you know, a thousand dollars or a million dollars. I mean, yeah. it was just, it was so insane. And I remember the biggest the biggest win I had, and I remember, from, I must have worked at the, worked at the call centre for like three or four months. Yeah. And in the first sort of two and a half months, I was absolutely devastated. I've never had a Division One winner. So they class their top prizes, they call them Division One. Right. And I've never had a Division One winner, and I was devastated about it. I was thinking, God, I'm never going to be, I'm never going to get someone that's won a lot of money. And I, it, I, I used to be really upset about it. And then I remember... I got this guy and he he was calling from Melbourne. Yeah. And he bought a lottery ticket in Melbourne. And they have, I'm not sure if we have it in this country, but basically you can have a membership card to the lottery so that when you buy your tickets, they're registered in your name. So even if you lost it, it's still registered. I think the only way that we do it is, is I used to do it online. Online. Yeah. So it would like Mm -hmm. always be, you didn't need a ticket. It was just online. And and essentially, you can have an online account and a membership card that are tied together so that if you just pop into the shop, you show your membership card, and then when you go home later on, you can actually log in and see that ticket. So even though you've got the physical ticket, you've also... That's good, that. Yeah, and it's like a way so that if you lost your ticket, it doesn't matter. So he bought an unregistered one. Right. And it's scary as a call, you know, working in the call centre when they ring and tell you it's unregistered and they think they've won a big prize because you're immediately, you're thinking, oh my God, you have to protect that with your life now. Because yeah. Because there's nothing you can do pretty much if you lost it, tore it, washed it through the washing machine. So That's when they tell you that, you, your, your heart immediately starts going because you're thinking, God, I don't know what you've won yet. Um, and, and blah blah blah. So so he read me out and and, and bless him, he, he was he was not Australian. Um his glass of English wasn't great. Oh, so bless him. I, I was I was struggling as it was, you know, to to understand his name and everything. So what you have to do is you have to establish what what division prize they've won, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Um and then it's at that point you you know whether you've got to transfer them. If it if he'd have won a division two prize, let's say that could be like two hundred grand, say. You right. don't have to transfer them, but because he'd won the Division One prize, I was going to have to transfer him. But did you hear how much he'd won? No. Four million. No. Four million. So essentially, he's got this unregistered ticket that he is just holding around that is worth four million that someone could just go rob him and take it and they'd have four million. Oh my God, I need to see how much that's worth in UK. God, I'm, I'm rubbish at the exchange four rate. Four million. Probably a- Probably over two mil. I'm gonna have a look. That is crazy. Yeah, that was my first big win. So Australian done two point eight, uh, two point one eight million. Yeah. Friggin' hell! I know. I know oh right. my god! And we we could just like uh, you've won four million. So so basically, you're not. It's very complicated. They have all these rules, but they said if someone doesn't say to you, I think I've won yeah. four million, and they just say, I think I've won something, you can't tell them if it's a division one. Yeah, right, okay, you have to just, and is there like a division one team then that deal with it? They're the PR so basically public relations deal with it because it yeah. is the top prize. So because he didn't say to me, Oh, I think I've won 
four million or whatever it was i couldn't confirm it so what i had to say was um you know congratulations you have won a prize i just need to pop you through to our public relations team so then and that's it that's all i'd get to say oh mate i know um, and i'm there absolutely buzzing because i'm like yes congratulations you know but i can't be too <laughs> happy about it so i just had to pop him through and i was so gutted You did a game show. So shall I give you the full story? Tell us the full story and you can say the name and I'm going to block it out with yeah, because, Gemma. Yeah, because it's not been on air yet. You're not allowed so, to tell yeah. it yet. Yeah. So I can tell you like bits. But basically, it all went... It, it actually started a long time ago. It started in that eight-month period when I came back from my first stint in Australia so yeah because remember i was going to come with you to the audition yeah because i was so nervous wasn't i so yeah i had and obviously i was only meant to tell like close friends and family which is why you, I, I told you and so i'd applied for this game show one night god i think it was like in the august or something as an absolute joke yeah. because i'm gonna say it because i want to block out Gemma. you ain't said me again <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, but yeah. <laughs> so basically, I applied because my whole family and I, we absolutely love. No! We play the game. We, we play the game on TV. We have the, what do you call it, like the game board. What do you call it at home? Board game. I was going to say, is it a board game? <laughs> is there a board game? Yep. Is there a board game yep. for that? We have the board game. Oh. We have books with questions in it to answer that were on that show. So Really? Yeah. I didn't know they did all that. Well, yeah. Honestly, we, because we love it that much, we're totally into that. And I, I, do you remember when I was going to the auditions and it was in Leeds and it was, yeah. it was freezing cold. It was like the rainy, snowy like type of weather where it's horrible and weren't you due to go back to Australia at some point? Well, well this is the thing, because my original plan was to go back in January, wasn't it? Yeah, but, I remember but, that. You were planning to go yeah. back. But I hadn't saved up enough money, so that's why it ended up yeah. being a lot longer. Um, I yeah. didn't end up going back till May, I don't think. Well, I think. Yeah, I think it was May. Yeah, it was May. Yeah, it was May. Um, so I had, I had the, the group, so it was a group audition, the next one, and it was about two weeks after I had that. The uh, call with Matt from Run After Her, and <laughs> so I get to this ho- and it was again. It was at a hotel in Leeds, and I get there, and oh god, I just remember being so nervous, and didn't I was so scared, and I didn't want to do it, but then I was like, oh, I'm going to have to do it. So I walk into the foyer of the hotel, and I can see like um, a stand that says, you know, level, uh, you know, level ten. <laughs> So followed my way up, went my way up to the up to level ten, and I just walk out into this like again like a lobby, and there's like a table set out with tea and coffee and some biscuits, and a couple of people sat in a booth all talking to each other. So I just stood really awkwardly, and more people arrived and stood awkwardly like I did, and I, <laughs> I didn't have a clue what was going on. I was like, this is. I, I, I wanted to leave. I was like, this is so weird. I was like, how do those people know each other? But then we're all stood like weirdos here by ourselves. Next minute, like one of the runners comes out and they're like, mm, hi. And you know, I don't know if you've had any experience of runners in TV, yes. but they're so like, mm, in your face and happy. I'm going to tell you all about my big brother experience oh my in a God. minute. Yeah, go yes, on. you have to. Because that's why, that's, oh my God, yeah. I'd have, apl- I know you I'd have applied to big brother as well at some point in my, my life if I was old enough. Um, but yeah, so. Then we get taken into, like, it's on, I think it's a conference room. It must have been on the conference level. So we're taken into this conference room and we're, we're told to sit on these chairs, which are in two rows, that are facing another two rows of people who are already sat there and they're, like, smiling at us. And we're like, what the... You know, like, oh, my God, that's awkward. And they, then the runners started saying, oh, they've already just had their audition. They're just waiting for the results. You're... So we had to sit and the, we weren't allowed to talk to them or anything. It was really awkward. And like some of them were like whispering, you'll be fine. It's okay. Um, <laughs> at this point, I'm thinking, what am I doing? I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> Honestly, and I'm looking around at all the other people in my group and I'm just looking at them thinking, oh, God. You know, oh, I, yeah. oh really? Panic. You know, what am I doing? Yeah. So we get taken into another room. 
it's all shroud you know it's so smoke and mirrors you don't know where you take oh god it's so and then you there's more runners sat on like a, a table like x factor judges i didn't want to actually be there I didn't. and it's awkward it's isn't awkward. it it's awkward because i've i've obviously yeah. done the auditions for tv stuff and it's awkward and i'm I mean, I guess I'm, you know, I can talk my way through things. I'm, you know, we're very similar in the sense that, like, I don't like sciences and stuff. So I was making an effort to try and fill silence and yeah. and everything. And, you know, we had to, there's a ca- massive camera set up filming us, by the way, the whole thing. Like, and they explain to you it's because the director watches the whole audition. Yeah. So that, they watch how good you yeah. are on camera. That's what they yeah. do. That's all they want to see, really. Yeah. They're not bothered well, about if you can get the questions yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So, first thing we did was a 20 question general knowledge quiz. And, right, in my head, I'm like thinking this is hilarious. But the people next to me are taking it really seriously, like hiding <laughs> hiding the answers so that, like, no one could cheat off them. You know, you know, like when you were at school oh, and you God. put your arm over yeah. your things so no one can copy your answers. They were doing that. So I'm thinking, oh, geez, like, these are serious quizzes. These are serious, like, people want... Yeah. So I'm just writing absolute nonsense down. <laughs> nonsense. Because I knew, like, barely any of the answers. And, I mean, I'm not sh- I'm not stupid, but I'm quite obviously not <laughs> clever either. Like, you know, I'm not, ge- I'm not... Oh, no, I thought you were really clever. That's why I was surprised. Oh. But, it, it, again, general knowledge can be anything. Exactly. It can be, like... Britney's last single to what's yeah, the history of exactly. this? Exactly. Like... So we did that. Wrote our all our answers down and, and some, like gave them to the runner at the front. And then we had to do like some games, which were kind of fun. Like you had to pretend that you, we were on no! one point, and um, we were split into teams to do all that. So it was really fun. But equally, yeah. it was, I was cringing for other people. I was thinking, oh lord, you know you're. You're as embarrassing as I am. Then we did another 20 question written down general knowledge quiz. Another one, I thought, for God's sake. Then um, we just had to talk about ourselves. We had to then stand up one at a time and, and look at the runners, but obviously there's a camera sat on like. The- just talking shit! We had to just talk. And there were some really cool, interesting people actually. Uh, you know, I judged them a little bit at the beginning, but they had some like really yeah. cool jobs. So there was a guy. Um, who seemed like a dead, normal, nice, down-to-earth guy. And his job was he did the graphics design for Kinder Chocolate, you know, for sweets. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> and good. I was like, whoa, that is so... Like, to me, I was like, that is that's weird. 20 times more interesting yeah. than what I do. And then yeah. there was, like, there was a, a trainee lawyer. You know, there was a, a, a real sort of, like... I can't think of the word, but you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, there was a very, oh, varied, there was a varied amount of, yeah. Like, very mixed from all different walks of life yeah. and different You know, there was like, there was like a mum and... that was just uh, a stay at home mum, you know, and just like to walk a dog yeah, and yeah. stuff. So, the, and I, there was two people out of that group, and it was the, the man with the cool kinder job and this dead normal, like, northern, she was like Newcastle, so, um, like, cool. She was just cool. And I thought those two were going to get through because everyone else was too yeah. try-hard or too, you know, like... Because they're like normal people. Yeah. They do instead like... Trying. The TV do like normal people. Yeah, yeah, they you know, do. Instead of trying yeah. too hard to be like, oh, I'm so interesting, listen to me. Um, so I, I, they were my two. I thought, right, they're going to be go through. So then after that, we get taken back to that room with the two opposing lines of chairs and we're put in the chairs that we were opposite to us before so that we're then facing a new crop of people so oh yeah because you're then yeah. you've come out and you're there waiting yeah. to go in so they must have had quite oh, a few people then they were doing that day. literally it was just like like 15 in 15 out 15 in 15 out 15 in 15 out it was insane yeah so um we're sat on this chair and basically a runner comes up and she's like right you know um she, she sort of kept reiterating you know, if you haven't got through, you can audition as many times as you want. Just because you don't get through now doesn't mean that if you don't do it, if you do, if you audition again in a year's time, you won't get on. Like, you know, it's a fresh audition every time. And they kept saying, if you do get through, don't call us. We'll call you. Like, you know, 
if you don't spam us, you'll be in the system. It's just we're busy, blah, blah, blah. They really kept reiterating that. So I reckon there's been people that yeah. have got through the audition stage and then just absolutely hounded them. They did yeah. that with they did that oh, with did Big they? Brother. They were yeah. like, yeah, don't yeah, don't call yeah. us, we'll call you. Because they must get hounded. So yeah. she goes to her thing and she's like, right, the people, if I call out your name, can you wait behind you've been successful everyone else thank you time blah 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 and she goes and grabs this post-it note and i'm at the front of everyone and i can see the names written through the post-it note she didn't like cover it quick enough and i saw yeah. my name <laughs> and i didn't get this like overwhelming feeling of excitement i like i actually thought oh shit I know you can't say much more because it yeah. kind of gives away what it is. But when it is out, I'm so going to tell, tell everybody on yeah. here. I mean, I've got to. I won't know until two weeks before it's due on air. And like they send you, you we've had a photo on the set, um, which we were not allowed to access to until that two weeks before. I, so I know because I did. Oh, God, it's, I'm talking like, God, this is about <laughs> 13 years ago. Yeah, You've probably heard the story a million times. Obviously, I did the auditions yeah. for Big Brother. And, oh, my God, it was a nightmare. I mean, I got really far down. I got down to being potentially me and my ex were yeah. going to be housemates. And I remember going to the first audition with my brother's girlfriend, and I went and my ex went. My ex didn't yeah. really want to do it at all. And I was a big show off. I was like, come on, just do the audition yeah. with this, do the audition. And we did the audition day, and it was fine. And then the next day, this is when I was living in London at the Excel Centre, they were like... It was thousands. I mean, thousands of people. It was like yeah. X Factor at the time. There was thousands. And they wanted like 180 people to come back the next day. Yeah. They really cut it down. And I remember them saying to me, my ex, we want you two to come back. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And the next day we got back and it was like smaller, smaller groups. But the way Big Brother worked then is they didn't mess around. They like they picked people yeah. in about four days. So then they were like, right, what are you doing for the next two days? And I remember being like, I've got to go to work. And they were like, you're just going to have to pull a sickie. And they did. Wow. I remember pulling the sickie. And they were like, come back again, come back again. And I remember we kept dwindling down. And one of the women, I can't remember her name, she was on the show. And I was with her the whole me? time throughout the auditions. Name? Yeah. She was the one that was like the activist yeah. and she had all the badges on. Yeah, and she, she wore like knitted woman. clothes. Um, it sounds really awful. She looks a bit like the penguin out back. <laughs> if any of the listeners really know who we're talking about, but please I remember... tell us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I remember sitting with her and I remember like, oh, you're going to get on it. And she was like, I am convinced that you two are going to get on it. She was like, I am convinced. And at the time, I didn't realise, but they yeah. were looking for a couple and there was two couples, uh, there was three couples that they were going to put on, this mm -hmm. man and a woman. Then it ended yeah. up being Sam and Amanda. Samantha, Do you twins. remember Samanda? Yeah. And then it was me and my ex. And we had to go and have all this, like, weird counselling. And then the last day, I remember going to this audition, and you, they just split you up then. You didn't know. And I remember walking into this room, and when I walked in the room, they said, <laughs> right, be a pig. And I was like, what? And they were like, be a pig. And I remember having to just get on all fours and walk around being like, <laughs> and snorting, walking on all fours. And they were like, now you're a tree. And they were just like, they were pissing themselves laughing. And we were just like, what the fuck? And they split yeah. me and my ex up into different rooms. And then I was in this room with like four or five people and loads of producers, yeah. loads of cameras. And then they made us do like some VT stuff like, do this to VT, do this. And then they took us in cars over to see a bit of the house and they let you in certain rooms and they like put you with different wow. groups and cameras and sort of left you there for a day, like a couple of hours or so to see how you got on. And then I remember they were like, right. Then it was like a couple of months till the show was on and they were like, you won't find out anything now. Don't hassle us. Don't bother us. Don't do anything. You will not find yeah. it. We'll just call you. And we'll sort it out and we'll come pick you up. But do not tell anybody you've done it. So, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Kelly. I mean, we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell him the truth. We're recording this afterwards because we didn't really say goodbye to each other properly. I know, yeah, we just hung up on each other. That's just the kind of friendship we have, isn't it? We're just like, man. <laughs> and then when I edited it, I was like, 
probably should say goodbye to you. And then, uh, yeah, and then it sounds like we're leaving on a proper high. So, um, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, thanks so much for having me, Michael. It's such a great afternoon. It's now 10.42 the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I'm not being funny, but it's like, you know, you've been a guest on my podcast. I'm like, yeah, bye. See you. Bye. Put down. I know it's so rude. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I just thought we'd call back and record the last bit saying thank you very much yeah. for doing the podcast. And no, it was an honour. It was an okay. honour. Thank you very much. I'm just no now going to binge watch 10 seasons of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yeah, me too. That is exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> and obviously spam Gemma about <laughs> podcast. Gemma. Absolutely. Okay, thank can't wait much. to hear it. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed making that with Kelly and chatting to her. I mean, I chat to Kelly nearly every day. So for me, it's no different. Although I was asking her questions this time, which we don't normally do. Like I said, we just normally chat about Housewives of Beverly Hills. Anyway, there was so much more to that interview. I really wanted to keep in. But unfortunately, I can't make the episodes two and a half hours long because you'd get bored and you want to leave. So I will keep you informed when Kelly is on TV and I might get her back on the show soon anyway and we can just have another chat. But for now, I'm going to leave you with my new song, which is Human Nature, and this is my cover. Enjoy.
着。